Welcome to the Ports Garrison. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Greetings. Welcome to the Ports Garrison. I am your host, P.D. Port. And once again, thank you for joining me. Now, what is it that I want to share with you today? During the course of last week, the Jamaican government um, presented its budget for the 2023 2024 fiscal year. We heard more than one presentation by the, the minister, and we also heard the opposition's response to it. Now, today, I want to share with you the view, the take of Senator Damien Crawford on this budget. He wanted to mash down some lies he said that was contained in the budget, and he wanted to prove that the budget did not did it for a lot of folks. Now, let's take a look at part one of Senator Crawford's presentation. Now, Mr. President, I stand this morning, with the, this afternoon, I'm sorry, with the intent, <laughs> I stand this, this afternoon to expose the intent of this Jamaica Labour Party government um, to give the indication that their way is the only way buttressed by some media practitioners who throw around um, willy-nilly the term fiscal discipline or fiscal indiscipline without truly processing what that means. The aim of this presentation, therefore, is to mash down the lie that any counter-proposal is a base of fiscal indiscipline. Indeed, the budget debate is where the government presents to the nation how they intend on getting maximum benefits out of the limited resources. And so therefore, there can always be conversations around the resources that are present and the benefits that are expected based on the policies, the programs, and the fundamental principles upon which the government proposed. We, I believe, are not getting maximum benefits from the available funds, and no deviation from fiscal discipline as a conversation context, is, as the context within this conversation is going to be positive. So all the ratios that are present will, are, are accepted to be standard, and by extension, we also remind the, 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 the um, parliament and the public, that these ratios were established under the People's National Party um, when we did the IMF negotiation, an issue for which I will come back. So to set this um, platform, I will then go through some of the numbers as did Senator Arbin Hill go through some of the numbers. So the total budget is uh, $1,012 billion. So it's really one point to zero one two trillion, but so as to not con confuse these numbers with one trillion and then hundred billion, I will stay at the billion. So it's one thousand and twelve billion dollars. Well, <laughs> well, well, all right. Let me tell you what I'm confused by, because the trillion dollar budget is the cost of the services that the government is about to send. It's no different than when I go downtown for a shoes and the man wants me to celebrate that the shoes is no more expensive than it was before. I don't understand why we're <laughs> celebrating the fact that you're now a trillion. You're spending a trillion for which you have claimed the majority I have to pay. So normally when I go to a restaurant and he says the food has increased, I don't be happy about that. So I don't know what the, the, the one trillion, one trillion is, is about. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out of my pocket. So, so, so. So, so the cost of goods, um, as, as Matthew, Matthew looked confused, but okay, we'll come back. All right, so we'll go back again, because a lot of the public is also celebrating this new shoes crisis. So we have to now make it clear. The government is about to spend on the services the public is about to receive a trillion dollars. The public, in turn, must pay in the form of taxes that trillion dollars. Whether it is by some debt, which eventually must be paid, so it's delayed payment, or it is by current payment, which is just current taxes. Fine, we will get to that. We'll get to that. So since the public will have to pay for these 
um, services that the government facilitates, then this trillion dollars is a cost to the public, and the public, therefore, should not be overly celebratory, in my opinion, but I understand that you must celebrate something. So the budget is $1,012 billion, and this budget is divided between debt, wages, and other programs. So, Mr. President, you're going to have debt, wages, and other programs. It's very important for us to acknowledge this, this, this structure of importance because the first importance within the budget that is even within our Constitution, my good Senator, is the debt. So the first duty is to ensure that that which we owe is paid under the debt aspect. So the first priority is the debt. The second priority is the wages that we are supposed to pay for the persons who carry out the efforts that the delivery of the service can be done. So that the teachers, for example, so that education can be delivered. Or the doctors and nurses, so that health can be delivered. It is this second structure that we have to remember later down because when the Minister of Finance was saying we would have to sacrifice capital budget, which is really in the programs, so as to pay the teacher, it suggests that he had inverted the structure of importance because the, the, the capital budget should be after understanding how much you have left having paid your, your wages and reasonable and livable wages. The other thing, so, 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 so we have the debt, the wages, the programs. Within this current trillion dollar budget is the debt 280 billion will be paid. So this 280 billion includes the interest portion, 155 billion, and the pay down of debt, 125 billion. Now, again, you have to understand, the debt have a cost to it. And so therefore, the cost of the debt, what you call the interest rate, the interest rate is a price of borrowing. So the cost of the, of the, 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 the cost of the debt is going to be 155 billion, and in an effort to remove or reduce the debt, you're going to pay down some of the, of the, um, the actual principal of the debt. Um, so we, we're, 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 we're coming. We're coming there. Um, so therefore, you have that, that, that portion. The wages is 367 billion, and that includes some of the government's duties like the pension and stuff like that. And then we have the programs, which is another 365 billion, and that is divided into the capital 75 and the recurring 290. Now, this is very important for us to understand because the 200, the 365 is really what is discretionary. That is the only portion that different governments really have a say about how they're going to do or what they're going to do. That's the only portion that would be different under anybody at all. So when I say, um, Nigel Clark, oh, we're paying the debt, everybody would have had to pay the debt. In fact, Nigel Clark has taken on what Peter Phillips also used to say, oh, we're paying the debt, because that is within the Constitution, a necessity that has to be paid. And it was signed by the People's National Party under IMF. I'll get to that soon. So don't, don't, don't be too hasteful. Now, then you have the capital, the 75, the recurring, right? So that is the discretionary. Now, maintaining the government figures means that this conversation has nothing to do, as I said, with the current fiscal targets. We're really focusing on the 365 and how it should be used. Now, the other thing I want us to also understand is when they say, oh, like, for example, education get the most, a lot of time is like in, in, in tennis, you have unforced errors. So what you want to, you want to really understand is what portion have they chosen to put to education? Because they also, in that big number, include all the teachers that they have to pay. So if you have all the teachers that you have to pay, that portion of education would automatically be done by anybody who is in government. So... It, 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 yeah, and the fact that they're underpaid, right, would mean that an increase in their salary, which will only increase motivation and not infrastructure and all the other things, can also meet a big jump in education. So what we're saying, Senator Leslie, is that we really should be focusing on the amount from what government have discretion over. 
and how I would spend it on this side and how you have chosen to spend it on that side. That's the only debate. So when I say give 10 million to the puppy, it don't mean that I'm being fiscally indisciplined. It might really mean that I'm saying transfer it from the post. <laughs> that is what we are discussing at this particular point in time. So, sorry? We, we will. <laughs> the, 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 we don't mean the two foot ones that have been taking the, the, the no, 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 the four, the four foot ones that compete as a pet. No, my, my eyesight is, is failing me, so I'm going to also be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only young in the context of politics because the others are much older. You understand? <laughs> I see people still saying, you're, you're, yeah, 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 I am over the hill now. But let, let, let us look at um, what we have been now. So the, the, the revenue portion, as I said, revenue and grants, 897, of which taxes is 824. Um, all in line with, with what Senator Hill says. But now I want to take a look at the whole shout about the no new taxes because in no way it means no more taxes. So no new taxes may mean no new tax category or no new tax rate, but it doesn't mean no more taxes. And we, we, be careful, be careful, be careful. Um, I've seen... <laughs> Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen many upsets in, in, in sports. We don't expect one next week when Kingston College walk away with a victory, but I've seen many upsets. So, therefore, what we have before us in the last five years, as per the fiscal paper, is that there has been in the amalgamation, in the, in the, in the total, a collection of more taxes. Right? So, therefore, in this collection of more taxes, other than in 2020, when clearly there was a lack of economic activity, there was um, a, 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 a total sum of 579 um, billion in 2019, 505 billion in 2020, um, 616 billion in 2021, 776 billion in 2022, and now projected 824 billion in 2023. Now, Minister Clark, in his explanation, he, oh, I'm pressing one. In his explanation showed that tax revenue, he suggests, is equal to tax rate times level of prices times number of transactions. And that is a fact. So the, 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 the tax revenue is dependent on the rate the level of prices and the number or the quantity of transaction. So in this case, uh, mathematically speaking, he's saying revenue can increase as long as one or a combination of the three, and the three that we're talking about here is rate, level of prices, and number of transaction. So the only way that the total can increase is if one or two or all three or a combination of those increase greater than the reduction in one or a combination of the other three. So that is what the, the minister goes on. But the people are not concerned, Senator Bunting, about tax revenues. The people are concerned about tax paid. So the essence of it is the tax impact because the tax paid is what is the tax impact? How does that, how much more am I paying? Now, the same calculation is actually true, but at a different level. In this case, Senator Grant is at the micro level, the person, and not at the macro level, the total, the government. Now, the government rightly is in glee whenever there is a higher tax revenue, I mean they have more to spend. But the person is not in glee if they have to pay more. So the leader of the opposition was suggesting that the, 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 the tax paid mm -hmm. was higher per person mm -hmm. and that was one of the contributors to the tax revenue being collected. So the tax paid is also equal, Senator um, Scott Motley, to the tax rate times the level of prices times the number of transactions. And I'm going to now do some of my own mathematics. So let us look at this now. In this case of salaries, the tax paid will increase 
if the tax rate remained the same, and that we haven't had a, a change in that tax rate. Your salary increase, however, and you have one work same way. So the number of transactions have not changed. So, no, you have to give me a chance. I said at the macro level. So, uh, at the micro level. So, at the micro level, you can't come to about 100,000 more people. At the micro level, person A is going to pay more taxes mm -hmm. if the rate, 25%, remains the same, which it has. Yes. His salary increase, let's say person A is a teacher, which it has and him still only have one work. Yeah. So therefore, this person, as the teachers have identified, yeah. that they're not as better off as the growth suggests because this increase in the taxes that they must pay make them carry home pay be no more than 20,000 more than they used to get. So even though Minister Clark continues to speak to the growth, the person who is now being able to afford living can only afford living on the net. He's concerned at the micro. So at the micro, an increase in your salary would lead to an increase in tax paid. Yeah, new or otherwise. Whether it's new tax or no new tax. So people have been paying more. No, we're going to come down to where... Big... All right. We... Hola. Hola, no, no. So, yes, yes, yes. Because sometimes, I, you know... I, I, but I love... I love Senator Hill. Because Senator Hill always set up my next point. He's always paying attention. And then he... He, he carries me straight into the next point. So he says, they can spend more because they get more salary. But not all people get more salary. So I'm going to now use another bracket of taxes, the biggest one, GCT, and I'm going to use food. No, I can't predict the students. So I'm going to use food. Now, the tax paid on food will increase if the tax rate decreases, but less than the increase in the price of food and the number of transactions remain the same. So you, you, you eat the same amount of food, but you now have an increase in the price of food, right? But the rate has decreased. That, well, Senator, um, um, Minister Clark continued to speak to decrease from 2020, by the way, but still. So I'm going to now do some calculations because mathematics was not reserved for Minister Clark. So I'm going to do some calculation myself. Algorithm yeah, the algorithms algorithm. were not reserved for Minister Clark. I'm going to use facts. So February 2022, let us say you spent $40,000 worth of taxable groceries before, on taxable groceries um, in 2022. No, I make sure I put taxable groceries because I had to prepare for Senator um, Samuda, because he will say, there is some food items that don't have, 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 have taxes. So I'm saying this 40,000 is on food items that have taxes. Good? Good. The tax rate, Senator Bunting, is 15%. And the tax paid per month on this $40,000, therefore, is 6,000. Total tax paid um, for the year would be $72,000. Now, let us look at what that same reality is, February 2023. Food inflation. Now, we can't use total inflation because I made it clear that this was on food. On the, 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 right. And remember, about three years ago, I warned that there were some within certain income brackets that the entire basket didn't apply to because they only almost eat food. So sometimes when the general inflation is at nine or six or five, the food inflation is, is they can't feed themselves. So the food inflation was actually based on starting at this point now in February, 11, um, and I use February because the budget come in March, 11.3%. So what happens now, the cost of the grocery before taxes is now 44520 um, the tax rate remains the same, 15%. And so now this person pays 6,678. The total tax paid on food for the year is now 80,136, an increase in taxes paid of 11.3%. So while there is no new taxes, there is additional taxes 
and the person at the micro is paying more taxes, therefore is feeling a greater pressure, especially if this person has not received a salary increase. Or the, the teacher. Right. Right. But the person also at the micro is a child. And the child don't earn income. But still, their consumption is tax. So therefore, when you say that the, the general increase can be based on multiple things, that is true. One of the things is that each individual, based on inflationary pressures, is being asked to pay more taxes at the micro. And that is the point that the, the leader the leader of, of um, opposition was making. It's important that we understand that because in any other entity or industry or business, if you pay more, you should expect and demand more. So therefore, the people therefore must be told and made to understand that they are paying more and therefore should demand more and should expect more. So if I go to a restaurant last week is 3,000 and this week is 5,000, I want something else. Is it a better service or better food or better environment? There must be something within the space that I... <laughs> there must be something in the space that I am getting more for what I am paying. And that's why I'm happy that you established from the start that what this is, is the people's cost for the government's services. And the people's cost has increased. Now there has been more activity and that's one portion of the increase. There has not been no rate increase, so therefore that's why I can't say no new taxes. But there, and, but there has been more taxes. So you should say, it is true, it is true. So you bowl the ball that you bowl, no new taxes. But you can never say no more taxes because more taxes have come onto the people. So, <laughs> yeah. and the people are paying more. And the basis of that differentiation is that the payer should demand more for what he is paying. And they should demand more too, because the business is a micro entity, just like the person. So the business, like some business where don't have access to sewage and have to be paying people for draw the sewage as a factory, should be demanding sewage if they're paying more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, no worries, no worries. Yeah, I don't know what every business is afraid to say. So the conversation then really lies in government's proposed policies. No one can deny that these targets and approaches um, started under the People's National Party government with the renewed IMF program after it was wrecked by the Jamaica Labour Party in between the 2007 and 2011. Let us not forget that the GLP was unwilling to even take the test. And when the PMP came into power, is that we had difficulty as a country, because IMF don't care about John Brown and Mary Jane, the country, our JLP and PMP, the country had difficulty in renegotiating. And that is why I refuse to make history die. Because why is it that we refuse to give um, the right honorable Portia Simpson her props for what she has changed? Uh, no, that is true. You have always been willing, and I accept you, Senator Hill. But there are a majority of people that even within our spaces, transfer it to only the finance um, aspect. And externally, there are many now seeking to, 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 to bridle um, Prime Minister Holness and, and, um, and, and um, Minister, Minister Clark as the architects and the, and the, and the, and the, the, the masters and the heroes of this policy. But I was there when we couldn't get a road as an as a MP. I was there that they were saying that we were austerity government and we can't balance people out. But I can't go further. The gains being appointed to wholeness, I was there in 2015 when Prime Minister Holness. Uh, 
Well, g- give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a chance. Prime Minister Holness, that is now acting as if he is the chief defender of these targets and the greatest believer. He said in 2015, we don't have to accept this deal being proposed. He was speaking about the British prison by the British government, and I'm quoting. In the same way that we didn't have to accept the IMF program. What? That the PMP negotiated and accepted, which is now wreaking havoc on the lives of the Jamaican what? people. What? These are the same targets. What? None of these targets have been changed. What? None of these targets have been changed. Yeah, now we go further. He said, he said, he said, he said, what is the trend emerging, and I quote, from all of this signing of secret memorandum, signing secret treaty, and selling us out to the IMF? The same targets. Really? That they are now claiming we are the ones willing. He said it was a sellout. No, no, this is a court. This is a direct court. An absolute court. He says, this government continued to quote, will sell you out. This government is not looking for your best interests. They are not looking to protect your rights. They are not looking to protect taxpayers of this country. This government is a spineless government that will sell you out. And now, we are robbing Portia Simpson of history by claiming that these are the people that are the true protectors of the fiscal um, discipline that we had. Yeah, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. No worry, sir. I... There is a, a culmination of events because it's just about 1.20 or it's 1.20 somewhere and Senator Crawford time is about to expire. So if you do give me a dual question. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, given that the speaker's time has expired and we're now at 1.20 approximately, asking that his time be extended for him to complete and that we expand the, the business beyond, of the Senate beyond 1.30. I'm, I'm entertaining no divide. Members would have heard, <laughs> members would have heard the question. Those in favor? Thank you, Senator Crawford. Thank you, Country. thank you, and thank you very much for being so kind. As, is, as is Senator Rodriguez was about to divide it, and so. <laughs> it's one of my favorite senators, you know. And she knew I was coming today, so she, so she looked like me now. I, oh, I love the hairstyle. So, the, <laughs> the, 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 but the JLP is known for what the young people now call gaslighting, because they have a habit of just claiming things as theirs. I mean, I was watching the most recent um, speech by, by Minister Clark. By Minister Clark. And Minister Clark says, um, we are not following the PMP. And instead, we are responding with subsidized electricity bills as a program. Really? You mean this subsidized electricity bill proposed by the PMP? It's the same one. That was in our manifesto, not in your manifesto, but it's yours. And you're not following us because if you followed us, it would have wrecked. When we were clear that this was our response to the suffering the people were making in an election called in the middle of a, of a COVID thing. So all of a sudden, he says, he will not follow us. But we did this. That was better than what they would have done. When is our thing he did? So I am here confused now. Because how do you disagree with your thing? No wonder the people say the opposition not opposing. <laughs> People said the opposition is not opposing, but it's not new. It's not new. It's not new. I can't really see these things so well. But um, employment of youth, you have taken um, the, the proposal for hard to be STEM, right? Um, and we have to claim these things because we are the first people to say hard should be extended to STEM education. This is in our manifesto as well. And so we congratulate the prime minister, who we know have. Now, thank you for watching part one. As I said earlier, tomorrow I'll be uploading part two and the final part um, of his presentation. So, look out for part two tomorrow, and I'll see you then. Until then, take care of yourselves. One love. Thanks for watching.